Can you? This um, item is coming out of the auditor's office. Our um, auditor, uh, Joe Paul Gonzalez, is here to discuss it. This is with a contract renewal uh, with the Grace and Associates. Um, Joe Paul. Good afternoon, Chair, Board of Supervisors. Yeah, the item before you is a contract renewal for independent auditing services of the financial statements and the single audits <coughs> for the county with. Uh, Grace and Associates. This is a two-year contract extension. This was an item that was discussed at last Friday's <clears throat> audit committee meeting and uh, the audit committee uh, recommendation from that meeting was that uh, this contract extension be be approved. As part of this extension there is a uh, additional general fund uh, contingency augmentation request for $60,000 for this for the fiscal year for the current fiscal year and um, I have uh, assistant auditor Larry Chapin here to assist with any questions that, that the board may have are there any questions I have a question Supervisor uh, Barrios. Joe Paul an extra $60,000 over the budgeted amount so they're going from Increasing their fee from 45 to six to 60 to 60. Are they doing some additional work for us? The Graces uh, had a five-year contract, and in that five-year span, a great a great deal of changes occurred in the staffing. In our office, in the auditor's office, we lost a lot of the accountants, and so the amount of auditing that they had to do because they had to increase the scope of their audit uh, has increased considerably uh, over the years and as a result of that um, that change plus the fact that the that the contract has not changed very much um, you know the price had not changed over the years that the graces felt that this was a, an appropriate rate that um, for you know for the services they're providing I'm not sure that it is appropriate it seems rather high because if you look at it it's eighty five thousand dollars per year is really what it boils down to for the next couple of years right uh, with really no flexibility and then an extra ten thousand dollars and ten thousand dollars extra per month I, I don't see that as being a reasonable amount even with the increase in in the scope um, I could support this, Joe Paul, if we didn't extend it for two years and put it out for, for somebody you know to bid on it, because we don't really know that this is a, a an amount that is um, fair and reasonable. I think uh, I think, you know, you're you're right on in your suggestion. The audit committee had the same uh, recommendation that that this contract be allowed, you know, to, you know, be uh, recommended for the next two years, but. But that prior to the ex expiration of this contract, that we go out to bid, and and uh, to see if we can, you know, have these um, independent auditing services uh, uh, priced out, see see what comes back. Yeah, because I do know that you you're in you're in dire need of their services at this time because we have a deadline coming up and it's difficult to to get all that done before our deadline is is here. But certainly. Uh, we could do it for a year. We don't have to go two years. We can do one year and then ex and then put out the RFP. Or you're thinking contract two years, go out for the RFP and then cancel the contract if we if need be. Well, uh, the the agreement before you is is for uh, pricing for two years, uh -huh. and that the recommendation of the audit committee was that prior to the lapsing of of the second year that we go off for so bid for the would be for the following for year. them we would be committed to a two year yes I, I just I'm not sure that I can support that I can support one year because I know that we have a deadline but to go two years at a rate that may be unreasonable I'm not sure uh, one of the issues is that there is there's we don't have an option here for to have a contract for one year and another contract for two years 
this is the contract that the Grace has uh, proposed to us. Mm -hmm. And so if, say for example, the board took unilar unilateral action to uh, you know, limit this contract for a one year scope, uh, the Graces are under no obligation to accept the reduction of the contract term. So They're under an obligation, but they could be they could meet our our request if requested. They could, but it's at their at their option, and I feel that that puts the county in a bit of jeopardy because if they say no, we're not interested. Uh, we we would. We would be hard pressed to f to find a, an independent auditor to come in and to audit the county the county's books at this late date, mm -hmm. and uh, especially since we are, you know, we're we're at the simultaneously doing a, a ERP conversion. Right. It becomes especially especially difficult. Well, that's all I had to say for now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Joe Paul. Supervisor Patel? Yeah, I, I completely agree with uh, Supervisor Barrios on this. This is kind of a uh, sticker shock for me. Uh, when we get our billing from the Graces, uh, and they've done a good job for us. I, you know, no complaint about the work that they've done, but do we get a per, you know, an hour type of billing, uh, how many hours they work on a particular project or, um, or is it just we pay them a, a lump sum check at, each year and they're at our disposal? We're, 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 we are invoiced by the, by the Graces uh, for you know, specific type of work that has been done as part of the audit process. Um, with regard to the number of hours that they put in, I, I <coughs> excuse me, I, I really, I'm not sure on that question well, I'm looking at Larry, and Larry's nodding no, that we're not getting a specific hour uh, amount. And and they're, <clears throat> under the contract, they're not obligated to pro to really provide that. You know, and that's... And... Uh, um, you know, I think you and I are uh, probably the same. <coughs> we use professional services privately, and whether it's a lawyer <laughs> or a CPA, uh, they generally bill us not by the year or job, it's by the hour. And, uh, you know, and that's where we have the concern about the substantial increase. If it's justified because they're doing a lot of, a lot more work and it, it, it's, you know, I'm well, not. I know that the, I know that they have been doing a lot more work because of their increased, you know, scope of the audit. Uh, they, you know, they have put in a lot more time than they ever expected they'd be putting in in the audits and and uh to be frank with you the 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 conversation i had with the graces was they were they did not want to perform the audit for the county because they felt that there was um, so much work that needed to get done that it you know it just wasn't it wasn't penciling for them so you know, this is the this is the price that the that they felt that they could they could reasonably uh, perform the audit in, and in addition to that, the last time we went out to bid, we sent the bid solicitation out to all of the uh, regional CPA firms, and uh, many firms called up the office to ask, hey, how much are we currently paying? And once once we responded, the uh, firms did not even submit a bid because the the price that we were paying, which was you know forty forty five thousand, was so low that they felt that it was not worth even putting the time in to propose a bid. So. Um, it's 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 my belief that the that the rate is not um, you know, it's 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 not excessive given the amount of work that needs to be done to perform the audit. Okay, well, um, I'll probably support this today because just simply, you know, it's a direction we need to go in. But I think 
uh, at the ex uh, towards the end of this term, we we should probably go out to an RFP. We are. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Um, it's, as part of the audit committee, supervised our chairman and myself, we have the same questions you guys had. Um, in fact, I was not willing to go for it until uh, our chairman convinced me, <laughs> no, Joe Paul convinced me that we'll be in trouble if we don't have the graces on board. And, and, um, and I said, fine, Joe, but let's make sure that <coughs> we, way ahead of time we go out and bid and we do it at least, Joe, one year before the end of their contract. So. If, if the first round doesn't produce anything, we need to know why, and then refix the rebid and start to start the rebid again. But I don't want to rebid three months before, and then it comes out with nothing, and then we're stuck with the graces. And I have nothing but saying good things about the graces. They actually volunteer a lot of their free time to the community. However, I'm putting my hat on right now, and is that we always need a, a set of new eyes every three to five years. We can't stay with the same CPA firm or the auditor firm forever. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Would anyone from the public like to address the board on this item? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the board? Uh, I have a couple more questions okay. uh, for clarification. Joe Paul, uh, the $85,000 for year, it's for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2014, which already, already ended. So when is that report due for that fiscal year that just ended? Well, the the report historically has been submitted on the last date which is march 31st march right? 31st our goal this year as part of the audit committee agenda we talked about contracting for additional help to ensure that we actually prepare the CAFR, the single audit the cfa schedule federal awards a much more timelier and so you will see in the next uh, next agenda item a contract proposal with uh, Hayashi and Whalen mm -hmm. to um, augment the you know the auditor's office um, with help you know with uh, qualified help to actually prepare the the CAFR so that the graces can perform the audit in a timely manner. Okay, so what they're telling us on their con on their letter is that if if we don't submit their what the necessary information they need by January 31st uh, for month ending January 31st, we will get an additional ten thousand dollar fee. That's right. And then another ten thousand if it goes to February, the, and that would be for fiscal year 2014. Y yes, ending. June 30th, 2014. 14. Okay, yes. now the contract with them ends in 2015. Shouldn't it be ending in 2016 so that we can cover? Uh, well, it's it's for the it's for auditing the, the prior year contract. So, like we're in 1415 now. The first year of the audit is is 1314. Okay, and it does say here the duration of the contract is to June 30th, 2000. I mean, 2016, so, okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chair, being on the, being on the audit committee, I'll, I'll, I'll lead on this one. Uh, I make a, a, a motion we approve contract with Grace and Associates for professional auditing services to approve budget augmentation from the general fund contingency for an additional 60,000 over the initial approved bu budgeted amount of 45 for a maximum contract of 105,000 for fiscal year 1415. Second. And first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Uh, passes 4-1 with Supervisor Barris uh, voting no. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to Next item. Thank, next thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, we're on item number 20. Uh, this is with regards to gray water. Um, at our last board meeting, um, Supervisor Robert Revis requested to have a discussion with gray water. Out of the discussion uh, that we had with your board last board meeting, uh, was recommended to come back to your board at this meeting and, and um, basically 
ask uh, your board to select two board members for the ad hoc committee uh, with regards to gray water. So. Okay. Um, unless there's any discussion, I would like to um, um, name Supervisor Rebus and Supervisor Patello to the ad hoc committee to look into gray water use. And my, my deal would be if it's possible to also look at, you know, solar application for new construction not to, you know, see if we can work all that in. Okay. All right. Do we, that's, we don't need a motion in a second, or do we? Okay. All right. So then we'll move on to, I believe, our last agenda item in the regular 22 agenda number 22 yes we have our interim uh, director public works director joe hordal here to discuss with you an emergency item that has come up um, at our uh, jail facility so uh, we have joe thank you um, as noted in the it uh, one of the two boilers at the main jail has failed we've uh, looked at repairing we've actually replaced the um, parts of the boiler and did a major rebuild several years ago and got extended life out of it. Um, but it is well beyond the life of the boiler, so we are asking for an emergency um, requisition. We have gotten the bids from San Jose Boiler Works. Uh, with the installation cost since the time of the AIT, and we can do it uh, within the uh, amount we're asking for, so we are asking for emergency approval. Questions? I have one, Mr. Chair. Joe, there's, there wasn't anybody locally in San Diego County? That Not that we could find. So the size of the boiler, it's out here. I think they, the firm we're using does a lot of the work kind of in the whole South Bay area. Uh -huh. So um, we jumped quick, um, but couldn't find anybody local. Went to somebody who's uh, been working out there previously and could uh, do it. So they have uh, they they have experience or experience perhaps. in San Benito County. You yes. have used them before somebody that we can. Yeah, it's my understanding they're the ones that did the rebuild on it when we rebuilt the boiler a number of years ago. Is that they had worked on that previously? But on a on a normal situation, normal process, would have gone through a process of, of obtaining. Correct, and we do have a second boiler out there that's used for the kitchen, and so we're looking at that one right now, and so that's one of actually getting through the normal procurement process of starting to investigate that because it's also passed its useful life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is there anybody from the public that would like to address the board on this item? Seeing none, what's the wishes of the board? I'll make a motion to approve for staff recommendation. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <laughs> Passes 5-0. With that, we will adjourn into closed session. Kelly. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Board of Supervisors will now adjourn into closed session to discuss agenda items number 23 and 24 on today's agenda. Agenda item number 23 is to meet in closed session to confer with the county's labor negotiators. The agency designated representatives are Allison Hauk, Ray Espinoza, <laughs> Joe Paul Gonzalez, Melinda Casillas, and Georgia Cochran. The employee organizations involved are institutions associations, law enforcement management, management employees group, SEIU Local 521, the general unit employees, SEIU United Long-Term Care Workers, Local 6434, and the Deputy Sheriff's Association. The authority to meet can be found in California Government Code Section 54957.6. Agenda item number 24 is to meet and confer with real property negotiators regarding property located at the San Benito High School, APNs 020-170-043, 059-020-001, and 059-020-003, located off Nash Road in Hollister, California. The agency negotiators are Joe Horwittle, Interim Public Works Director, Ray Espinoza, CAO, Matthew Granger, County Counsel, Barbara Thompson, Assistant County Counsel, and Shirley Murphy, Deputy County Counsel. Uh, the negotiator on behalf of the high school is John Perales, on behalf of San Benito High School District, and under negotiation are the price and terms of payment. The authority to meet can be found in California Government Code Section 54956.8. Thank you.
is there anybody from the public that would like to address the board on this item or these items at this time? Seeing none, we will adjourn to close. Mm -hmm.